Aspen Skiing Company has one headlining project in the works at Aspen Mountain right now. But just over the horizon, SkiCo is going to be investing hugely into its biggest mountain, Snowmass, to completely revamp and revitalize its lift fleet, starting as soon as next summer. With several new six-packs, a gondola, and a multitude of smaller lifts that have large impacts of their own, the Snowmass experience has the opportunity to be completely changed. But how much will it actually change? Join me as we answer that question and others as we explore the Snowmass Master Plan. I'm alone, I'm As always, it goes without saying that this master plan is in no way a definitive guide to what will or won't happen at the mountain. This master plan simply gives us some insight into the thought processes of Aspen Skiing Company. Now, the first project to be implemented, most likely occurring next summer, is the Coney Game Lift, which will be a detachable quad or six-pack. Currently, partway up the hill is the Coney Glade High Speed Quad, which is both extremely underutilized and ancient as far as detachables go, being built all the way back in 1986. That makes it one of the oldest detachables operating in North America. Now, back in the day, before the Village Express, you had to take a high-speed quad called Fanny Hill to get to Coney Glade from which you could get to the Sam's Knob and Big Burn areas. Starting partway up Fanny Hill and ending partway up Coney Glade was a lift called Burlingame. Burlingame didn't start at the true base like Fanny Hill and didn't end as high as Coney Glade. Burlingame did end just high enough to access Sam's Knob, just about where the current Village Express has a mid-station for the same purpose. When the Village Express went in in 2005, it replaced Fanny Hill and Burlingame, but Coney Glade was left behind. With the Village Express now serving all of its terrain, Coney Glade is now severely underutilized, which is an affliction also shared a bit by Sam's Knob. No Snowmass Insider's Guide yet, but I can give you the tip that Sam's Knob is a great place to lap if you like Mogul Blacks because there's nobody over there. Coney Game is a combination of Coney and Burling Game, as the new lift is intended to start where the old Burling Game began, but end higher up, where the existing Coney Glade lift ends. This alignment would not be accessible directly from the base, but would be a nice addition to lap all the trails on the main face and avoid waiting in line at the base for Village Express. A tip I'll give you guys right now is that if the Village Express has an absolutely gargantuan line like it tends to, it may be quicker to just walk up to Coney Game. Coney Game is going to be huge because it'll allow for you to lap these runs a lot more quickly whilst avoiding the busiest uppermost and lowermost portions of the Sam's Knob terrain. Additionally, it should help direct some traffic from all of the lifts around it, including Village Express and Big Burn. The alignment would require a turn, which will either be accomplished with a canted shiv apparatus looking like this, or a full detachable midstation. If it is a full detachable midstation, I would assume it'll have loading at the station, which would be great to even further avoid the crowded funnel that is the Fanny Hill Green. Now, with Coney Game becoming a primary lapping lift for this front side Sam's Knob terrain, it makes sense what this next move is. This next move is to replace the Village Express with a gondola that will offer a huge increase in capacity. In this scenario, Snowmass envisions a monster people mover in the gondola that will get a ton of people on the mountain, and then those who want to lap the terrain under it will utilize Coney Game instead of going all the way from the summit all the way down to the base and taking off equipment. Right now, Village Express gets overwhelmed quite easily. Some of the most popular terrain at the resort is the Big Burn Pod, served by the Big Burn Six Pack and Sheer Bliss Quad. The most efficient way to get to these pods is to take Village Express, and as such, morning lines on it can get absolutely insane. No Snowmass lift line can compare to those found at the Summit County Vale Resorts, but I've definitely waited in my fair share of 30 minute lines at the Snowmass base. The idea with this is that the gondola will move those big lines more quickly, and the Coney Game Detachable will prevent the big lines from forming again. This has the potential to be really effective, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to how the Coney Game lift is perceived and utilized because I can totally envision a future where, 10 years from now, nobody uses Coney Game the same way nobody uses the existing Coney Glade lift, in which case this plan will be in shambles. In all honesty, I'd guess that there's about a one-third chance that that becomes the reality, so therefore a two-thirds chance that this plan is successful, which is definitely something I can get behind. Something else that people won't immediately think about upon hearing about this gondola is a slight speed upgrade. Snowmass is home to long lifts, it has one of the tallest verticals of any ski mountain, and its lifts are all extremely long. The Village Express, even when running at full speed, still takes nearly 10 minutes to ride, which is just unheard of for a detachable. A slight increase in speed on the gondola would shorten the ride time by about a minute. 
Additionally, the new gondola would have a mid-station in the same place as the Village Express currently has one. At this mid-station would be a maintenance facility, cabin parking facility, and a redeveloped learning area. This learning area would follow in the footsteps of the likes of Steamboat, focusing on moving the learning experience higher up onto the mountain and out of the base area, accessed by a gondola. It would feature a couple of carpets and would most likely have some regrading done to it. With them trying to build a beginner area higher on the mountain, and with the existing meadows area at the top of Elk Camp, it wouldn't surprise me to see this Assay Hill learning area go. However, the current plans have Assay Hill staying and an additional carpet being built at the top of it. If all three learning areas, Meadows, Assay Hill, and Village Midstation are kept around and functional, then it's no secret that Aspen is trying to make Snowmass its premier beginner skier destination and reroute some traffic from buttermilk. Something I do find interesting about this gondola plan is that Snowmass would then have two gondolas and no chairlifts out of its true base area, which is very rare in North America. It's super common in Europe for the base area to be exclusively gondolas, but in North America there's almost always at least one chairlift, so this would be an interesting deviation from the norm. They'll still have the Skycab Pulse Gondola, which isn't really a ski lift, but more of an asset of the transit system, and Assay Hill, but neither of those get you anywhere except back to the base. I do understand why they want to do this. This would allow for much better access in the early and late ski season, as well as during the summer. At the top of Sam's Knob, there is a small but crucial lift plan. A short platter lift running in this direction, named Wine Cabin, would carry guests from the Big Burn terrain to the top of Sam's Knob, allowing for downloading of the gondola. In this case, Snowmass could stay open longer because they wouldn't have to maintain the snow on the lower elevation Bonsai and or Green Cabin runouts, and would rather just stay open until conditions at the higher altitudes couldn't sustain anymore. Now, I'm not sure if they would do this, opening as early as possible and closing as late as possible, but this small lift would certainly set them up to do that. While we're on the topic of crucial surface lifts, let's talk about the replacement of the Cirque Platter. Cirque is a very popular lift because it provides easy access to all of this extreme terrain and eliminates the hike. Cirque doesn't get massive lines, but the lines move incredibly slowly. The plan is to double the capacity with a new model. And not that any of you would care, but the new Cirque also wouldn't have the turn like the current one does. It would still stay a surface lift with a relatively low capacity, so I only see upside for this replacement. We've got two more things to talk about in the master plan. The first of those is the Burnt Mountain expansion. At this point, this is still primarily a hypothetical. This lift was first approved in 1994, but no action has been taken yet, and I don't foresee that changing anytime soon. However, if it does change, things are going to get crazy. The new Burnt Mountain detachable quad would serve a huge quantity of glaze and trails on the two creeks side of the mountain. It would be the longest lift at the resort and would have one of the highest verticals of any lift around, too. Currently, to access all of this terrain, you have to hike from the top of the Elk Camp Quad. To lap it, you have to ski all the way down to the bottom of two creeks, ride that up, switch to Elk Camp, ride that up, and then do the hike at the top. This lift would eliminate all of that and offer a huge increase to Snowmass's carrying capacity and directly lift-served area. Now, once again, I believe this project is a long way off, if it ever happens at all. But if it does happen, get excited. Burnt Mountain would be a game-changer. And so now, let's discuss the final aspect of this master plan, lift replacements. A lot of Snowmass's lifts are high-speed quads from the 90s and 2000s. This means they are starting to get up there in age. Additionally, they are starting to get overwhelmed. Take, for example, the Alpine Springs high-speed quad. There used to be a somewhat parallel lift, Naked Lady, that served part of the same pod, meaning that the pod used to have way more total capacity. Naked Lady was removed because it was deemed unnecessary extra capacity, which left the pod with a much higher terrain capacity than lift capacity. And now that skier visits are rising like never before, that is starting to show. As such, Alpine Springs is proposed to be upgraded to a detachable six-pack, which will have a much higher capacity. The new Alpine Springs will be built to run the same speed as the old, but because the old is, well, old, it doesn't exactly run full speed anymore, which means the new lift would also offer a speed boost. The exact same things can be said for the Elk Camp high-speed quad. Eventually, down the line, the Sheer Bliss high-speed quad could get the same treatment as Elk Camp and Alpine Springs. Sam's Knob probably won't be getting the treatment because it just doesn't need it, unless it has a major maintenance issue in the coming years. A Two Creeks replacement isn't in the master plan, but it wouldn't surprise me if it is upgraded at some point due to new developments at its base, or in conjunction with the new Burnt Mountain lift, or because of maintenance issues, or what have you. That just about wraps it up for the Snowmass Master Plan. So do I believe that this will revamp the Snowmass experience? No. 
Absolutely not. What I do believe is that this will improve the experience, especially getting out of the village in the early morning. Beyond that, the master plan has potential, but I'm just not sure how much of it will actually get built out. And even if it does, I'm not sure how much it will change the experience. Sure, there will be slight improvements here and there, but overall, the Snowmass experience will still be as awesome as it is currently. Let me know what you guys think down below. As always, please put any questions down below. Thank you all so much for watching. All my love, I'm out.